Welcome back to learning about how to deal with this god-awful stress that's going on internationally. Uh, this is my horse, Pepper. I've had her for 20 years. I bought her when she was five years old. She is the, she is the picture of calm, well-adjusted. Of course, she's treated like a queen. There's a saying, uh, dogs have owners, cats have servants, and horses have staff. I'm Pepper's staff. I want to talk to you about how life accumulates. One's response to stress is a result from what you accumulate daily, meaning do you exercise? Do you learn how to deal with your emotions? Do you learn new things in order to make new connections? Do you give time to your spiritual life? Do you, do you have a faith that you actually know and study? In, in talking about things of that nature, if you don't do those things, our response to stress is going to be very limited. And it's going to become a habit. And the habit if it's a bad one, will just make your stress continue. But when you do do the exercise, when you do learn how to deal with your emotions, by the way, a good book to get is written by Albert Ellis, Rational Emotive Behavior Therapy. He takes you by the hand and he leads you through how to start asking questions to yourself when these situations arise. And studying new things, learning new things, which creates new neural pathways. This was first discovered by a Dr. Marianne Diamond back in the 1960s. And she proved through studies by training, well, she dealt with rats, and then dissected their brains after teaching them new things, and she found new neural pathways. The entire science community said, oh, no, that isn't true. But back Later on, in the 1980s, she was proven correct by Dr. David Snowden, who was doing a study with the nuns of Mankato. He was specifically studying Alzheimer's disease. Wonderful book to read about that, the nuns of Mankato. But getting back to when you do the exercise, when you do the spiritual learning about that, and we'll get into that more specifically, when you give a rest to your emotions, when you do these things, all of a sudden your stress response to no matter what it is, becomes more balanced. And balance means you move along a lot easier. This is a picture of balance. She doesn't have to worry about anything, but she's not a human being. I uh, want to tell you something about horses. When I see a horse out in the field by themselves and there's nobody, that horse is nervous because horses are herd animals. There has to be at least another horse around. They won't sleep fully unless there's another horse watching out for them. It's true when they're in a herd, that's when they are at their optimal functioning because they depend on each other to do things and look out for each other. We can learn a lot from these herd animals. We are herd animals too. They say the most worst punishment in prisons is solitary confinement. So I guess it stands to reason we're a herd animal too. Getting back to life accumulating and what we do and what we don't do, it has a direct relation onto our hormones in our body. I like to call it hormones in balance are a hormonal harmony. Hormones out of balance is just total destruction. How do you keep your hormones in balance? Well, let's, let's name some hormones right now. Adrenaline and cortisol, that's the fight or flight hormones. Very necessary, very, thank God we've got them. But the funny thing about them is, when they get spiked up, it takes days for them to come back down, unless we do certain things. 
The other two hormones, major hormones, are dopamine and serotonin. Those are rest and relaxation. Those are our recuperation hormones. So you've got the adrenaline and cortisol, fight or flight. You've got the dopamine and the serotonin, the rest and relaxation. So how do you balance them out? Well, if you do have a stressful situation and your adrenaline and cortisol spikes up, then we do the necessary things, or if it doesn't call for those hormones to spike up, what we can do to bring them back down, large muscle exercise actually dissipates the adrenaline and the cortisol because you are actually using the muscles, large muscle exercise, that the adrenaline and cortisol are geared to get in motion. They send all their energy there for those muscles to either fight or fly. Large muscle exercise, what, what would that be? One uh, thing is walking. Uh, in fact, there's a specific prescription for walking. If you could walk four miles, one hour, and never get out of breath, meaning if you were walking with a buddy, you could talk to them and not be out of breath. The goal is, is when you do that, four miles, one hour, you are optimally using your heart. And the large muscles are all working, which would dissipate the adrenaline and cortisol. We, we have cause to be stressed out at work. We have cause to be stressed out when you have teenagers. You have cause to be stressed out for so many things. And if you have large muscle exercise every day, it dissipates that. The, another uh, exercise to do is uh, pool walking. That's where you get in the pool and you get about chest high and you walk through the pool back and forth or swimming laps, all of it and not ever getting out of breath. That's the key because then you're optimally using your muscles. You're doing aerobic exercise at the right pace. So if you can't do four miles in one hour, build up to it. It's not a race per se. It's a strategy to keep healthy. REBT, Rational Emotive Behavior Therapy. Albert Ellis uh, wrote books on this, did phenomenal studies on it, and it gives you some strategies and a skill of asking yourself questions when different crises or stressors come into your life. And by going into that default mode, this is happening, and these questions that you ask yourself, it gives the adrenaline and the cortisol a stop order because you're using your mind, your reasoning, to come to a better solution. The neurobionics. When you actually learn a new skill or, or a new anything, learning a new language in order to be able to speak to a native, that is actually creating new neural pathways in your brain that also gives you more access to possible solutions for different stressors that happen in your life. Learning an instrument to play, to perform, that creates new neural pathways. Anything that you do that takes study and practice creates new neural pathways. In spirituality, they did a Buddhist monk study in regards to meditation. And they took their levels of hormones before the Buddhist monks would go into meditation. They were already, the dopamine and serotonin were already at optimal levels. The adrenaline and cortisol were at their ready to respond levels, but not out of whack. After the meditation, they took their hormone levels again. The dopamine and serotonin were even higher. Remember, these are the feel good, rest and relax, rejuvenate, recreate. These are good things. They also help you sleep really good. The Buddhist monks know their faith. So I'm not, I'm not promoting Buddhism, 
I'm not promoting any one faith. What I am promoting, whatever the faith you do have, study it, learn it, prove it to yourself. Because in the studying, you will learn certain skills and strategies that that faith has. If the faith has been around for a long time, it's there because of a reason. It served its purpose. Remember the important thing is this whole international crisis that we're having the same stress response whether it's personal or international. It will pass. The important thing is how we get through it. And by doing these exercises and these rational emotive behavior therapy skills and learning about your faith and doing new, learning new things, neurobionics, putting all this in a daily schedule will help you get through this. While everyone else is losing their mind, you will be maintaining yours in order when we come out at the other end you will be optimally functioning. Health and joy to you and yours.